Welcome to this week's Battle of the Ports and a racing game from Rage Software that started life on the Super Nintendo in 1994. This is Power Drive. The goal of Power Drive is to complete a World Rally Championship, travelling from country to country. There are various types of racing events in the season, ranging from a single qualifying race, rally cross, special stages and skill tests. The player earns money by qualifying or winning to continue the season and repair damage to the car. There are also items to collect placed at predetermined points on the track, including money, a stopwatch that freezes time for 5 seconds and nitrous, to give the player a speed boost. As the game progresses, the player can purchase higher class vehicles with the money saved. A game over in Power Drive only happens from failing to qualify for the next racing event multiple times, as you need to pay to retry, and if you aren't winning, you aren't making money, so yeah, game over. In terms of controls, the game offers tilt style, where the left and right turn the car left or right, or you can opt for a full 360 degree D-pad motion, which some players may enjoy more. Whichever option you go for though, will result in sluggish controls, which really do hinder the game. Next up is the Mega Drive version, which for some crazy reason doesn't allow for music and sound effects simultaneously. Don't these devs know this is not an Amiga? Anyway, the music ranges from ok to pretty poor, so opting for just the sound effects is the right choice, since they sound pretty good. Unfortunately, just like the SNES version, the controls are rather squirrely on this Mega Drive release. So as far as playability goes, there's not much change. But as far as looks go, this Mega Drive version is quite nice. Yeah, it's missing the high resolution screens found in the SNES original, but the in-game graphics look rather nice, and the night mode looks vastly superior thanks to a clever use of the Mega Drive shadow and highlight feature. Amiga next and boy people will think I'm being a downer on the Amiga but honestly I'm not. This version is bloody awful. Apparently it was developed by Liverpool based studio Denton Designs. Let's start off with the positives. 1. The game allows for sound effects and music at the same time unlike the Mega Drive. 2. It's actually full screen and moves at a reasonable frame rate and uh, yeah that's where the positive points end. Now, I've complained so far about the controls on the SNES and the Mega Drive versions, but this port is a million times worse. The controls are so laggy that the game is unplayable. It is next to impossible to go straight, turn a corner or even slightly adjust the car without slamming into a wall. I'm sorry, but this is trash. Oh, and yeah, I am aware there is a CD32 version, but let's be honest now, it's the exact same game.
the Jaguar even got a port of power drive, although they tried to jazz it up by calling it Power Drive Rally. The first thing I noticed about this Jag version were the nasty JPEG artifacts on the still images. Yuck! Power Drive Rally was programmed by Peter Johnson, who wrote several titles for Ocean Software. As you know, I'm not a fan of 99% of what Ocean put out there. Now to be fair, this was Peter's first and only work on the Jaguar. This is meant to be a port of the SNES version, but as you can see, it is quite different. There are some nice added touches to the graphics. The game offers a higher resolution play area allowing for more track to be displayed. The game runs up to 50 frames per second mind you, which is nothing to scream home about. Staying with the positives, we have a code driver giving instructions, and there's an option to tune the audio balance. Sadly, the game is way worse than the SNES version in terms of playability. The car feels heavy, then all of a sudden, they're as light as a feather, resulting in some very poor controls. The game also has less content than the SNES version and looks cheap in terms of presentation too. It's as if the developers made this a turd, just because it's on the Jag. I know that's not the case, but it does seem like it. Denton Designs were also behind the MS-DOS port, but they seem to have done a much better job with this one. It controls more like the SNES version, although maybe with a touch more lag. Unfortunately, the game actually runs in a small window. I'm zoomed in right now, but this is what it actually looks like. Yeah, that's quite tiny, especially when the Amiga version was practically full screen. Drive even made its way onto the Game Gear, and it's actually pretty good. The controls feel quite like those on the Mega Drive version, and it also seems to be based upon the Mega Drive release rather than the SNES version. The Game Gear port is fully featured with weather and day options, however they don't actually show on screen. As you can see here, in this practice area, it's meant to be raining, but only the car physics are affected. No graphical presentation of rain is shown. Same with Night Racers, the areas just look like it's in the day. Sound options are rather weak, we get music or an occasional beep. Honestly, this is a race with sound effects switched on. Yeah, basically silent. Let's take a look at all those versions of Power Drive running side by side.